Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In this week's video for Slider Revolution 5, I'm going to show you how we can start working with gradients and how we can add some additional parallax effects to give a nice three-dimensional effect to our sliders. Now you're not limited to just using this in sliders, you could use this same effect to build up an entire page using Slider Revolution 5. So let's take a look at how all of that is done right now. So I created a basic slider in Slider Revolution 5 and we're now ready to go through and set up some of the parameters that allow us to specify how we want this slider to work. So first of all, we'll leave it as a default slider. We'll give it a name and we'll call this Parallax. And we'll give it an alias and we'll do the same again. Slider type, I'm going to leave as a standard slider and we'll have that set as an auto. That's fine. I'm not really too bothered. Actually, let's go for full width. Why not? Then we'll come up and what I need to do is enable the ability to start working with Parallax and 3D. If you don't enable this, then you won't be able to select these options when you start creating your slides. So what you need to do is just expand Parallax and 3D. As you can see, by default, it's turned off. If we now switch that on, you can see we've got a whole range of different options. Things we're interested in is the mouse sensibility. We've got the event, the Parallax Origo, and the mouse spaced speed. Now, we need to change a few things on this. You can see if we go to event, we've got mouse move, we've got scroll position, and we've got move and scroll. Now we don't want the mouse move because if we use that, that will mean that the parallax effect will happen when we take the mouse over the image itself and we'll have sort of a full sort of full range of motion as it were, which we don't really want for this example. But obviously if you do experiment with these and see if it works for the effect that you, you're kind of trying to create. For me, I want to deal with the scroll position because I want to control the way that the images are in relation to the scroll position on the page. You can see we've got Parallax Rigo and we've got, we've got Mouse Enter Point and we've got Slider Center. Let's leave that to Mouse Enter Point for now and we can come back and change that should we need to. We can set a background speed if we want to, and we can set a layer speed. So I'm gonna set my layer speed to 10 for this example, and everything else is fine. You can see we've got a range of level depths from one through to 15, and these have already been predefined. And this is just simply the amount of motion that'll be applied to whichever level depth you choose. So if you choose level one, it'll move by five pixels in the direction or directions that you choose right the way through to 51. You can use these if you want to, or you can fine tune and tweak them to get the exact effect that you want with your particular slider. We'll leave them as they are for this now, and we'll just hit the save button. So that means we've set up the basic configuration. We now jump over to the slide editor where we can start creating and setting up our slides. Now for this particular slide, I'm going to go through and create a colored background. Now normally I'd use a main background image, or we might use transparent, but we're going to choose colored this time. Once you do that, you can see we get the color picker that allows us to go through and choose a specific color. And you can see, pretty simple layout. We can go through and choose any of the predefined colors, or we can choose one of our own and mix it through however we want. We can also adjust the actual opacity of that background. And you can see the little chip in the background shows us exactly what that's going to look like, depending upon the color and the transparency we set. We're not limited to solid colors. We can go through and we can choose gradient colors. And if we click on that, you see that change of the dialog box. We still have the color picker, but we now have two different sliders. Now, these are basically the gradient that's going to be applied, where we can fine tune and tweak that so we can create our own. And if we want to, we can save those out to call them back up again. Now, you can see if I choose one of the predefined core presets, you can see that lays things out. And we can use these different little icons that allow us to adjust the position of the color. So you can see this is the darker blue. So once we hit that point, that's the end of the gradient and everything from that point over to the right hand side is now a solid color. In this example, the solid blue. And if we do the same from this side, you can see we can pull that in. And it means we've got a very short gradient in the middle. We can put that back as it was and we can leave that now as is. So you can see this shows us both a, for a vertical and a horizontal kind of layout, and we can switch between those should we want to. We can even choose a radial layout. So we've got a range of different options. We're gonna keep this simple, and we'll just leave it at vertical. If I want to, I can adjust the angle of that. You can see at the moment that's set to 180, so if I don't want that, I can simply drag this to any kind of degree angle that I want. So now that'll give us an effect that goes across diagonally at a 320 degree angle.
So we say we're happy with that. If I wanted to, I could save this now as a preset. But for now, I'm going to leave them same happy with that. And I just click on the check mark. We've now got that gradient set up. As you can see, the color chip shows us what that's like. The little color chip where we've chosen it shows us. And if we scroll down, we can now see we've got that background gradient all set up for us. Pretty simple and straightforward to deal with gradients. Okay, so before we go any further, I want to make one alteration to our slider. At the moment, it's just a little bit too tall for my liking. So I'm going to just quickly jump back to my slider settings. And as you can see, we've got it set up. And it's just picked in the default settings of 868 pixels high. I'm going to set this to be 600. Just make it a bit more manageable. And let's just jump back into the slide editor now. So you can see now we have a bit bit more of a manageable slider there. So the next thing we need to do is put some elements onto the page so we can start creating that parallax effect. So we're going to keep this pretty simple. We're going to couple a couple of different elements on there and we're just going to come up and we're going to say add a layer, choose image. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use something that I've downloaded as part of one of the sliders you can sort of pull in from the premium version of Slider Revolution. So we're going to pull in this mug of coffee and insert that and we'll put that roughly down the bottom there. We'll rotate it around a little bit first so the handle kind of faces up a little bit. So we put that like so. And then we'll come in and do the same again. We'll add another layer. This time we're going to choose image again and we're going to choose the mouse image. Click insert and we'll position that over on the left hand side slightly. Okay, so we've now got two elements on there positioned roughly where we want them to be. Next thing I want to do is just put some text in on this section by here. So we're going to come and add a layer and we'll say insert text HTML and we'll say just to put a title in there and we'll drop that over that side and we're just going to make that a little bit bigger. So let's go through and set that to be something like 48 pixels and a line height of 55. Looking okay. Probably go a little bit bigger than that actually. Let's go for 72 and 80 on there okay and we're going to set it to a different font size uh, sorry style and for this example we'll just use railway that's looking pretty good I'll load that in and we'll just drop a little bit of text underneath there as well so we come back up add another layer and we'll say we're going to put text html in there and I've got a little bit of text that I've created now if you put text in and you find that you get this incredibly long line of text shooting across the page and you don't want that you want to have a nice block of text on there that's pretty easy to deal with all we need to do is make sure that that particular layer is selected and if we come up onto the style section you can see we've got some different options we've got this T which just looks like it's actually ghosted out but what we can do is we can specify whether we want to have a wrap on the text itself so we'll click on that to wrap the text now nothing happens you'll just see the little symbol shows this downward facing arrow as opposed to the arrow for pointing over to the right hand side that's just telling it it's now going to wrap the text but you'll see if we take a look at the width of the text element or the text layer you can see that's currently just over 3000 pixels wide which is massive so what we need to do is just set that to something a bit more manageable so let's just start off by setting that to 500 press enter and you can see that now creates a much more manageable block of text. Now we can stretch that over a little bit more so it kind of comes in line with the text above it. But we've kind of got that roughly we want it to be. So we've now got our two blocks of text and all I'm going to do is just change that over and put a lighter font in there. That looks a bit better and we'll set the line height to be something like 35. There we go. Just make sure the box is big enough to display all that. Make sure everything is looking good. And there we go. We've got our couple of different elements on this. Let's hit save so we know we've got all that saved in position. So we've now got a pretty basic looking slide. Nothing's happening with it. It's no interaction with it. It's just literally staying still. So let's just position those a little bit neater. Just put the mouse up in line roughly with the top of the text. So we've now got something that looks a little bit more interesting. Again, like I say, let's just save that. And if we jump over to the test page where I've got this set up, we'll take a look at what it looks like. You can see it's going to be pretty basic so far. So this is the test page. You can see everything is in position. If we scroll up and down, it does exactly what you kind of expected to, which is every element is kind of fixed in place, and it just scrolls up and down on the page. 
So let's just jump back in now to start a revolution and we can take a look at fixing that and adding a little bit of parallax effect to it. But just to start off with, you can see that the gradient in effect looks pretty good if you've got the right kind of images on there. So it's very quick and easy and also means that you can simply keep down the size of your slider by not having to use background images all the time. Anyway, let's just jump back into slider revolution and let's add some of that lovely parallax effect to it. Now this is pretty easy. What we need to do is specify the elements and how much parallax effect is going to be applied to them. So let's just say, for example, we want to take this mug of coffee in the bottom corner. What we can do is we can just select that, make sure that's the object that's active, or the, the layer that's active. Now we come to Parallax 3D, you'll see Parallax Depth is set, and currently is set to No Parallax. So if we expand that out, you can see there's the 15 different levels of parallax effect that we talked about back at the beginning of the video. Now the thing to note with this is the higher up we go on here, the smaller the actual movement is. So it's kind of the further away from the furthest elements, as it were. So you kind of think that level 1 with 5% would be the sort of smallest movement and 51% would be the biggest movement. It actually kind of works in reverse. So let's just see that in action. Let's set this to somewhere like 40%, somewhere in the middle. Let's hit save on there. We jump back over now to the demo and let's just refresh that. We'll see that the mug of coffee is in the same place. And as we scroll up and down, you can see now that moves in relation to the slider's position. So that now looks like that's in a different layer, different position, further away, shall we say, than the text element and the mouse. So it kind of looks a bit weird because only that's moving. So let's go back and just come back in and set exactly the same now on the mouse because they're on the same kind of level. In other words, they're on the background elements. We want those to kind of move in exactly the same way. So let's just check. We've got that one set to 40% level eight. Click on this one and do exactly the same on there. Now, if we come through to these different elements, we can set a different value on there. So let's just say we want this to move slightly more. What we can do is we can come to this and we can jump down and we can choose a, a larger value. So let's just for this example go to 15 and do exactly the same there on the block of text at the bottom. So now if we hit save and jump back over to our test, let's refresh that. Everything is in position and now when we scroll, you can see the different elements move at a different rate. So we now kind of get this pseudo 3D effect to it. And obviously you can fine tune and tweak this to your heart's content. You can have things move in different ways. Now, this is pretty straightforward, a very simple example. And what I want to do now is I'm going to jump back into the settings and show you some of those other settings we could choose at the beginning and how they affect the way that the slider works and animates in its parallax levels. So we've seen how the initial setup for the 3D parallax effect has taken effect in this example. So let's just jump back through to our slider settings and I'll open up the parallax and 3D settings on the right hand side. Now we set this to be scroll position and slider center at the beginning, but let's take a look at some of the other options in there so you can kind of get a feel for what they do and see if there's a kind of use for what you might want to sort of apply to your 3D and parallax effects. So you've got scroll position. We've also got move and scroll and mouse, oh, uh, sorry, mouse move. So let's click on mouse move first of all, and let's just save that out. Jump back into this and refresh it. So you can see everything is in the same position until we move our mouse pointer into the actual slider itself. And you can see as I move it around, we now start to get this effect based upon the position of the mouse pointer on the slider itself. And you can see the different levels of parallax effect that we apply to it will show up differently. So in other words, the wonder widget and the text looks like it's closer to the camera, as it were, to the background elements, which are the mouse and the coffee cup. So you can see they move at a slightly different rate. So it gives you that sort of sense of three dimension. So let's just jump back in and let's just choose move and scroll. Hit save again, and we'll just come back in, refresh this, and we'll see now that we get the same effect, but we can also scroll, and that will also have the same effect as we had earlier on, in conjunction with the mouse position parallax effect. So you can see you can kind of get a quite crazy kind of effect on there. Okay, so let's just jump back in. You can see we've got slide center, but we've got mouse enter point. So let's just say, let's try that, save the settings, Come back over and refresh. And now this depends upon where our mouse actually enters to the way it works. But again, we get that scroll effect and we get the mouse movement effect. 
Not a lot of difference there, if I'm honest, but there is a slight difference. So that pretty much wraps up this video on dealing with gradients and the parallax effect in Slider Revolution 5. I hope you found this useful. I hope it's given you an insight into what you could do and how you could use parallax effects or gradients in your sliders to not only create good looking sliders, but also in the case of complicated sliders, keep those file sizes down and make sure they look great across all the devices without taking ages to download. Anyway, if you've got any comments, questions or feedback on this video, anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. Until next time, take care.